avoid making the mistake that 99% of make and edit then users fall for. This error is a security issue that can expose your or your client's data. I see a lot of people connecting their BAPI assistant tools with their NITN or make webhooks. But the issue with that is that most of them are not protecting these webhooks with security measures. I'm going to provide a solution for these issues from a no code or low code standpoint with NITN and also a more enterprise ready solution from a Node.js API where we're going to be adding a middleware that will validate the authenticity that will validate that Papi is the author of the requests of our assistant tools. Let's go to this diagram so we can understand the better the idea. Our customer that is booking an appointment with our Papi assistant. So our Papi assistant invokes our Papi tool that sends the information to our server entry point. So in this case, this is our webhook process the logic and returns an, a confirmation or a mistake. But here is a threat with this approach. As that webhook is not protected, anyone with malicious intentions can approach it without any issue. How can we solve this? We can add a layer of security, adding the x -Papi secret. The x -Papi secret is a security layer that we can add on top of our tools so we can make sure that Papi is the one holding that webhook. Here I am in my tool, schedule calendar slot. I have my server URL, but here's the important part. It's almost mandatory for us to add a secret token so we can validate in our webhooks that Papi is the one that is actually trying to reach that endpoint. So now I will show you how in our NN workflows or even in our API endpoints, we can add this layer of security so if any malicious origin try to reach our webhook, this validation will return a not authorized status and the malicious origin won't have access to our core logic. For this video, I have prepared two scenarios. The first one is an NATN workflow where we validate the x secret. And the second part of the video, we're going through a more enterprise ready solution where we are receiving the BAPI request in our API instead of our instead of a webhook and there we're going to use a middleware to add that layer of security and add a lot of validations there. So first of all, let's go with the N8N workflow. Here in this N8N workflow, from our webhook, we're going to get not only the body, that is where all the information is being sent from, but also the headers. And within the headers is where we are going to have this X Papi secret that that is the value that we're going to add here. First thing that we're going to do is check the format. Usually we can use a random string of 32 characters. That's a, a standard. So first in this basically checking that the that the format is correct. So in the second node we are going to directly check the X Papi secret and, and check that is the same as we expect. What we have set on the Babi dashboard, we're going to check that what Babi is sending us from there is exactly the, the same as we expected. The best practice is, for example, if you are self-hosting edit n, is to store this secure value in an environment variable. Don't worry because for this n8n template, for the code snippets and how to set these environment variables, I'm going to share a link below with a document with all that information. So. Basically, if you are self-hosting NITN, you get to add this environment variable in the .env file. And if you are using NITN in the cloud, you can use the globals variable. Okay, so here we have our second check. We're checking that this value that is in the request is the same as we expected. So this is where we're making sure that Papi is the author of the request. And the third node is an extra layer of security. In the worst case scenario where your secret value has been compromised and for example somebody gets that token and try to to hit our webhook with a fake http request we're going to catch it here because in the real payload that Bappy is sending in the call we are getting when the call has been created and we're validating that the information we're receiving in this webhook includes a call that is having created less than 10 minutes ago so with this check, we are only we're only allowing Babi or our webhook to be alive and receive requests from ongoing calls. 
here is where we check that everything went well. The format is correct, the value is correct, and the timestamp validation is okay. So here is where your real workflow starts in your valid paths is where your the logic of your workflow should start. And if you get to this invalid path, it means that this request has been suspicious. So I strongly encourage to wire up maybe some spreadsheet here or an air tail to get the information and audit this kind of suspicious requests so you can monitor them and make sure that your data is safe. Being that said, this is an easy way to secure an 8N workflows, just adding these four nodes, this being the most important one. And if you don't know how to set an environment variable, you can just paste here what you have add in the secret token here. It's not the best, but it's way better than avoid doing these kind of steps. So this is a simplified solution for end to end workflows. But if you're working with clients that require another level of security, I'm sure that you are not opting for end to end and maybe you're having your own API to integrate with. So we can have control of everything. And for that type of advanced scenarios, I have prepared this case. If you're a non-technical founder or you prefer no code options, I strongly encourage to still see this part of the video because you are going to understand how a more advanced solutions looks like and you can do it yourself or you can show this video to your developers so they can implement something similar. Being that said, let's jump to the code. Here I am in my Node.js API. Instead of receiving the request in my webhook, I am receiving them here in this API endpoint. So when Babi hits this URL, we're going to have these two middlewares. Here in create calendar slot is where I have my core logic. But with this middleware, I'm securing this endpoint. I'm going to walk you through this file so you understand what we were doing. So here in the code, we are going to replicate what I have already explained in the NATN workflow, but with that, an extra steps so we can have even more control of the operations. The first thing is that here we're going to grab the secret token that we set in BAPI. We already set it in our environment variable. Also, the name of the header that is BAPI, X BAPI secret. Here in this code version, we're doing more validations. So we're also validating the whitelisted organization side is. The first thing that we're going to grab is the API key. That is the secret token that we configure in the tool server URL. Here we're grabbing all the information from the request because if we identify a suspicious request, we want to have more information about it. And here we are building an object with all this information of the request and adding what API key they have been using and more information about Bobby. Uh, the call ID, the tool call ID, the payload that the assistant sends, uh, the organization ID, and more stuff like that. For example, if we are handling HIPAA compliant or non-HIPAA compliant assistants. So here we start with the validations. First, we check that the API key, that means this, that the secret token is not only present, but is exactly the same that the one that we have stored. So the secret token is a valid secret token. Also, we are checking that the organization ID of the of the BAPI assistant is included in our whitelisted organization IDs. Here we are doing also the same check out. Check that the call has been created less than 10 minutes ago so we can make sure that we're only receiving requests from ongoing calls. And the last check is that we make sure that this request is meant to be a tool call, a BAPI tool call. So if all of these checks have passed, perfect. We're logging it here. Authorized request uh, with a call ID, with a tool call ID. And we're, going, uh, and we're going to have a file like this daily. So we can have a list of every request that we receive in our side. Doing this will reduce our dependence with the BAPI frontend and the logs that they are showing us. But here is the interesting part. So what happened with the suspicious requests? We're logging them, all of them, in this file. We're going to generate 
this file daily so we can have all our logs organized. Let's dig deeper in this file. Here I'm storing secret value test at the secret token. Here we are in Postman, that is an HTTP client. We can test our webhooks and our APIs. I have replicated the body that Bappy sent us. For example, here, I just copy and paste this body in the log details of Bappy. So if I'm not sending the Bappy secret key, I'm going to get an error message saying that the API key is missing. And here we're going to have it in our logs. So next try, put something invalid. Now we're getting that. If we try it with the real value, that check passed, but we are following the validation that this body that I have just copied and pasted is invalid because it's from a call that happened a couple of days ago. So when Bappy is the real actor sending that, that information, this value will be less than 10 minutes because the tool call only happens within the call. So with a valid payload, this is what our tool is answering. The tool call ID and the result of it. Here we saw all the logs of the invalid request and we have all the information of the request. Here we can see that has been made in Postman, the timestamp, of the request, the timestamp of the body, and all the relevant information. And here we have all the logs of the authorized. So to finalize, we are back in this chart where we can see that if any malicious origin try to reach our server or our NNN webhook, it's going to hit with our secret validation and get a not authorized message instead of our previous scenario where they were able to get all the information from our unprotected endpoints and webhooks. Adding this simple layer of security can be a game changer and can prevent a lot of cybersecurity issues. So I strongly encourage you to implement this in all your projects. As I said in previous videos, AI voice space is growing really fast. And with all these advanced tools at the tip of our fingers, it's our responsibility to secure implementations for our projects and also for our clients. So I'm a software engineer with almost 10 years of experience. So I'm sure that every technical founder will understand this type of solutions and the importance that is securing our implementations and our clients. But even if you're non-technical and you're leveraging the power of the no-code tools, it's more important than ever to create secure implementations for our clients. So in this channel, I'm going to be sharing all of these types of advanced solutions so you can provide them to your clients safely. If you have any concern regarding any topic on how to do advanced solutions, please let me know in the comments so we can make a video on how to solve that problem. I'm going to stay tuned in the comments if you guys have any doubt about this implementation or a similar. Being that said, thank you very much for watching this video and I'm going to be providing all the resources mentioned in this video in a link in the description below. Thank you and see you in the next one.